The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Say, Casey, do you think they'll ever put my statue in the Hall of Fame? What are you famous for, Ethelbert? For 27 straight years, I always got the same part of the turkey. <laughs> That's some kind of a record, ain't it? Well, because you consistently get it in the neck, that might make you notorious, but not really famous. Mm, no, no, Ethelbert. You know, you have to do something really big, you know, something important to deserve a famous name. Like what? Well, like Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in class. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, After Turkey, The Bill. Seven o'clock in the evening, a medium-priced uptown restaurant known as Patrakis's Olympian. At a table for two, a flashily dressed young man pushes aside his empty plate and says to the pretty girl who sits opposite, Hey, that turkey wasn't half bad. <laughs> you didn't leave much of it. Neither did you. Shall I order dessert now? Uh-huh. Hey, waiter. Gus. Okay, kid. What do you want now, Joe? We're ready for the plum pudding now. Poo plum pudding. That's what you want, too, isn't it, Lottie? Yes, and coffee. Same here. Okay, Chief. I don't know why you won't let me do anything for you in a classy way, Lottie. I asked you out for a Thanksgiving spread, and you made me bring you to a cheap place like this. Joe, you can't afford to throw your money away. You know what I can afford. I may not have as good a job as my cousin Bird yet, but it doesn't mean I... What's Bird got to do with it? He's got plenty to do with it. If you didn't have to work today, you'd be out with him now instead of me, I know. Bird isn't working tonight, Joe. He came home before we left there. I could have had dinner with him if I'd wanted. Yeah. Oh, don't be like that, please. Why shouldn't I be? While I was in... While I was away, you and him became awful good friends. We were always friends, the three of us. We grew up on the same block. Yeah, but while I was away, he moved into your old man's room and house so we could be closer friends. Oh, don't start that again tonight. We're out for a pleasant evening, and it has been pleasant so far. Please, Joe. All right. Comes out of dessert. Two plums of pudding. And coffee? You know, when you go out with me, Lottie, you're going to get class whether you think I can afford it or not. I'm going to take you to dance land. I'm going to buy you a whole roll of tickets. Best you'd get out of that tight wide fur as a soda in a movie. All right, that's all now, guys. Bring me a check, will you? You said it, Joe. All right, Joe. Since you won't drop the subject, we'll talk about Bird. Well? He wants me to marry him. Figured that from that dirty double-crosser. He isn't a double-crosser. He knows I've been going with you since we were kids that I've always been crazy about you. And while I was taking that bum rap on the reformatory... You didn't take a bum rap, Joe. You asked for what you got. All right, so the cops had the goods on me. That gave Ferd no right it to... It gave pay. me a right to do a lot of thinking. Hmm. And so you decided a sneaky yellow drip like my cousin is a better bet than me, huh? I don't think Ferd is sneaky or yellow. No, you don't, huh? No. And I don't think you're a criminal. Nice of you to say that. I'm not being nice. I'm saying what I believe. If you make me sure you've learned your lesson... I... Yeah? You won't have to worry about me liking Bert or or anyone. There's never really been anybody but you, Joe. Only, only I've got to be sure. How do I make you sure, Lottie? Just show me and Dad that you're steady, that's all. And I've been showing you that since I came back. Didn't I get a job right away? Yes, Joe, but, but I don't see how you can afford those two new suits and that overcoat with what you're making. Oh. Oh, I get it. Bird can buy clothes or take you out, and it's okay, isn't it? He's never had trouble with a cop. But the minute I spend an extra buck, you and your old man figure I've glommed it somewhere. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Your old man especially. Hates my insides. He don't want you to have anything to do with it. If Dad would... hated you, he wouldn't let you stay at our rooming house. He rents rooms, and I pay for the one I rent. That's business. And to ease your mind about the extra dough I spent, Lottie, I'm a lucky guy with dice and a good pool player. I... Here's your check, kid. Thanks, Gus. 
stay here so we can get out of here. We're going to dance land. We're... What? Joe? I haven't got my wallet. Oh, you've lost your money? I don't know. Maybe I left it home. Well, phone Dad. He'll look in your room. Well, if he found it, I'd have to go there for it. It's only a few blocks. You stay here, Lottie, while I go... Oh, and... you you don't have to leave the lady here, kid. You're an old customer. I know you come back and pay. Well, thanks, Gus, but I can make better time alone. Hand him over, Even that racket's the oh, blue sure, in there. sure, sure. Mmm. Oh, this fancy coat. <laughs> nice and bright with red stripes. You got a class, kid. Yeah, but right now I got no dough. I'll come back as soon as I can, Lottie. I hope you find your money. Yeah, I hope so, too. And how. Gee, Casey, it's nice of you and Miss Williams to have Thanksgiving dinner here in the Blue Note with me. We're nice people, Ethelbert. Well, the very best. True, warm-hearted, and generous to a fault. Pass the salt. Also fault. honest, kind, and steadfast. Here's the salt. And sure. pepper. You know, we're really understating our sterling qualities, then. We've risen to the heights of magnanimity, whatever that is, by chewing Thanksgiving turkey in this crummy joint we see every day, simply because our little pal here had to work. We could only get away from his bartending long enough to grab a meal on the house. We hope you appreciate our sacrifice, Edelbert. Oh, I do. Good. Pardon my reach for the Tabasco. <laughs> to prove your gratitude, Edelbert, you can pay for our dinners. Yeah, well... Uh, tabasco, uh, any? Huh? Thanks. Hey, you've made a splendid suggestion, Casey. Paying our bill will relieve Edelbert of a small part of his obligation Thanks. for our company. Yep. Say, come to think of it, you two are working today yourselves. You didn't have time to get a full meal any further away from your office than this crummy joint. Ethelbert, you impute our motive. He destroys my faith in human nature. Ah, uh, yes. The spirit of the day is entirely lost upon this lug. Casey, if you'd pay me what you already owe this crummy joint, I'd be only too happy to buy you dinner. <coughs> get it, Walter. This yeah. guy's too wise for us, Annie. <laughs> I'm afraid so, Casey. Casey... Oh, uh, yeah, Walter. You wanted the bar phone, you said it's Oh, nuts. I'm only just finished my turkey. No, this means no dessert, Casey. I'll see what Burke wants. Well, stall him off if you can. Yeah, I'll do my best, Danny. Well, oh, great. <laughs> Hello, Casey speaking. Uh, look, Burke, we haven't finished our dinner yet. Oh, all right, all right. Wait till I get my pencil out. Corner of Whitestone and Evans. Well, what happened there? But is that all? For a run-of-the-mill story like that, we got to leave our dessert and... Well, okay, Burke, all right, goodbye. Why I stick to this newspaper racket, I don't know. What was it, Casey? All the cri- Look, we got to get out to Whitestone and Evans, Ann. Some mug just held up a filling station there and got away with a couple of hundred bucks. Did he shoot anyone? No, no. Huh? Just one of those inside page fillers. Burke says news is light, and we got to cover it. All right, where is Whitestone and Evans? The way uptown, not far from uh, Petrakis Olympian Restaurant. You know, we've eaten there a couple of times. Yeah, I remember. Hi, any description of the hold-up guy? Yeah, he wore a flashy blue overcoat with red stripes. See you later, pal. So long, Ethelbert. So long. Say, wait! Who's going to pay for this... crummy joint? <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. In mansion or cottage, in city or town, Thanksgiving Day is a time for family reunions, feasting, and fun. But through all the gaiety, there runs a deep note of real Thanksgiving for blessings past and present. There's a tacit recognition that a better-fed nation is a stronger, happier nation. And one of the ways in which the American way has made its greatest progress is in the production, preparation, and distribution of food. Now, take the matter of delivering food alone. The great organizations who process and ship us our better foods know that flavor, purity, and freshness are best preserved by clean, sanitary glass. And that's why, as you look around the shelves of your food stores, you see that so many famous brands are brought to you in gleaming, protective containers made of glass. Containers that preserve and safeguard flavor and taste while they permit you to see in advance exactly what you're buying. It's noteworthy that many of the leading brands of food of all kinds come to you in anchor glass containers sealed with tamper-proof anchor caps. Products of Anchor Hawking. 
the most famous name in glass. Here's what happened, Miss Williams. I'm working the station, see? I'm here in the office when this hold-up guy opens the door and says, Give me your dough. He had a gun, of course. Oh, sure, he had a gun. The time was about a uh, quarter past seven. What did you notice and about he... the guy aside from his flashy overcoat? Well, uh, he wore his hat pulled down over his eyes, and a, a handkerchief was tied around the lower part of his face. Also, he worked fast. What'd he do? Well, he, he told me to get into the gent... Uh, the restroom there, and to keep quiet. He, he locked the door on me, and I, I heard him open up the money drawer there, and then I heard him leave the joint. I started pounding on the door, and after a while, I managed to bust out. That was uh, about uh, quarter to eight. And then I phoned the cop. You might have I shoot a picture of that busted door, Sergeant? Go ahead, Casey. Thanks. Y- you want a picture of me, too, won't you, Mr. Casey? Huh? Are you? Oh, sure, yeah. The door and you. I'll shoot the door first. <laughs> yeah, it's going to give me old lady a big kick to see me written up on a paper. <laughs> hey, uh, was this big puddle of grease in front of this door, Jones, when the hold-up guy locked you in? Oh, yeah, yeah. I spilled it there earlier, and I didn't have time to clean it up. And the mug must have stepped in it, Casey. Along with the description of his flashy coat I've sent out, I included instructions to look for a guy with dirty grease stains on his shoes. Well, the two things together ought to nail him, sir. Yeah, yeah, I told the sergeant here's something else that ought to nail a guy. Well, what's that? Well, one of the bills he stole out of the money drawer was an old 20 that had been torn in two and kind of stuck together with scotch tape. I-, I took it in just before the robbery, so I remember it. Well, looks like you caught there plenty to work on, sir. Yeah. Well, we got all there is, Annie. Let's blow out of here and get back to the blue note and get some plum pudding and coffee. Ha uh-huh, come on. Hey, 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 ain't you going to take my picture first? Uh, you- oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh... I'll kind of stand here by the empty cash drawer huh, and uh, point my finger at it. Yeah, that'll be original. Well, stand at point, pal. Go ahead. Great. All set now. Shoot. Jones. Get the hell. Hey, hey, gosh, I'm getting my picture took. Don't walk in front of the camp. I have just heard what happened to you. About that guy in the blue overcoat which holds you up. Well, I'll tell you all about that later, Gus. So as I get my picture. No, no. I tell you and those cops about it now. You'll tell. Who are you? Oh, I, I am Gus Nicopopoulos. I am waiting in Petrakis Olympian Restaurant three blocks from here. And I know who is the kid who robbed my good friend Jones. You know? Yeah, I know as soon as I am told the news about that fancy overcoat. What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? I tell you cops everything. Even where to find this whole up kid. He tell me he is going with his girl to dance land. <laughs> You got no right to pull me off that dance floor, copper. You don't believe this waiter, Sergeant. Joe hasn't held up anybody. We're going to see about that. Close the door, will you, Casey? Okay, Sarge. Now, this overcoat we got from the check room, it's yours, isn't it, Bowers? Yeah, that's my coat. And you, Jones, say the guy who stuck you up wore a coat just like it? It's the same coat, Sergeant. You're nuts. The store I bought this blanket and a couple of dozen just like it. Now, take it easy, kid. If your story's okay, we'll check on everyone who owns a coat like this. I'm going to search you. While I'm at it, you can tell us what you did after leaving Petraka's restaurant. After you couldn't find your wallet, I mean. I went straight to my room and house to look for my dough. Finally, I found it in the dresser drawer. Then I came straight back to Petraka's for Lottie. That's Miss Newcomb here. Yeah. The dough's in that wallet you just took out of my pocket. It's about 40 bucks, and it's mine. I didn't steal it. Hey, is that torn 20 in the wallet, Sergeant? No, Jones. Torn 20? I guess he hasn't got a gun on him either, Sergeant. He's clean, Casey. Yeah, so are his shoes. Grease would show up plain on those light tans. Well, he may have changed shoes and hidden a few things. Oh, yeah. How far is your rooming house from that filling station, kid? Oh, I'd it's say... two blocks away down Evans Street. My father runs it. How long did Joe leave you in Petrakis' while he was finding his money? I... I didn't time it. It wasn't more than 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour. So what? So you had plenty of time to stick up Jones and go to your room before you came back to Petraga. All right, if that's the way you dope it, copper, search my room. I'm going to do that little thing, young fella. All of you, let's go. Lottie, why have you and Joe come home with all these people and these policemen? Everything's all right, Dad. They made a mistake about Joe, but it's going to be all right. A mistake about Joe? A big mistake, Mr. Newcomb. I don't understand. I'm Sergeant Healy, 5th Detective District. There was a stick-up a few blocks from here tonight, and uh, Joe Bowers here is under suspicion. A stick-up? Joe? He didn't do it, Dad. I know he didn't. You were with him, Lottie. You must know. Your daughter wasn't with him for a long half hour. 
Mr. Newcomb, I haven't taken time to get a search warrant, so I'd like your permission to go over Joe's room. Give him a go-ahead. I have. He'll find nothing to tie me up with any heist job. All right with you, sir? Oh, yes, sir. Of course. Thanks. Take me to your room, Bowers. Come on. Everybody else stay here with this uniformed officer. Miss Williams and I'd like to go with you and Joe, Sarge. Okay, Casey. Well, thanks, Sarge. My room's on the next floor. It's right up those stairs. Sir. Lead the way, kid. And don't try anything tricky. Why should I try anything? All you got on me is that a stick-up guy wore an overcoat like mine. And that's all you're gonna get. There's the door of my room, cop. Open it. Make yourself at home. Give me a key. The door isn't locked. I never bother. Hmm. I'll turn on the lights. Now, do your stuff. I will. You won't find anything locked up here. If I got nothing worth stealing and nothing to hide. Now, if you were going to work in my cousin's room across the hall, you'd need a fistful of keys. He's one of those careful, secretive guys. You, you know? got a cousin living across the hall? Yeah, his name's Ferd, a Ferdinand. And is he a crumb? I take it you don't like him. I like him about as much as he likes me. Maybe more. But he's been making a play for my girl. He isn't getting anywhere. How you doing, copper? You see anything of the dough I'm supposed to have stolen or the gat you think I use in that stick-up? Not yet, kid. And you won't. I'm 100% in the clear. Oh, yeah? How did this get under your carpet? What? Casey. A torn $20 bill. Stuck together with scotch tape. I never saw that bill before. And I think Jones will identify it as the one taken from his cash drawer. Wait a minute. There's more dough under this rug, Sarge. A couple of hundred bucks at least. I spotted it, Casey. I don't know how it got there. I didn't pull that stick up. That's the comedy, Joe. This money nails this you. This is a frame-up. I tell you, it's a frame-up. Where'd frame you up. hide your gun? I never had a gun. I swear I did. Come clean, kid. Where's the gun? Wait a minute. Will you give me a break? Let me think. Let me think a minute. Yeah. Yeah, there's just one mug will pull a thing like this. And if you're right, guys, you won't let him get away with it. Question Ferd, Sergeant. Question my cousin Ferd. His room's right across the hall. Might be a good idea, Sergeant. Okay. Let's go over. That's the room. Yes? I, um, I'd like to talk to you a minute. This is the police. Just a second. We're just starting to get ready for bed. I'm Detective Sergeant Healy, young man. This is Miss Williams and, uh... Mr. Casey, are you? Hello there. What do you want? Let me close this door. Your cousin Joe here has made some accusations against you that it's my duty to investigate. Oh, he has, has he? Do you own an overcoat like Joe's here? Blue with uh, red stripes? An overcoat like that? Or have you ever worn one? I wouldn't wear a zoot blanket like that if you paid me. You say? Yes, I say. Mind if I look around your room? Why? Bert. Someone wearing an overcoat like Joe's held up the Whitestone filling station tonight and... What? You know where I bought this coat, Ferd. I think you got one just like it on the QT. I think you slipped my wallet out of my pocket just before I left here with Lottie tonight, so I'd have to leave her and look for it. You were watching the rest of it, and when I left it, you went to that filling station. Why, you're station. crazy. Sergeant, you can't believe Maybe it. Maybe I don't, but I want to search your room. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Have you got a search warrant? No. Hey, get out of here. Say... I know I write... Unlike a certain relative of mine, I've got a clean record. Who are you calling a lousy You, wreck? Joe. Boy, I'll knock and you out. And it's cheap. I'll cut it up. Cut it, both of you. So you don't want me to search your room, hey, young fella? You heard me before, Sergeant. Hey, pal, wait a minute. You're taking the wrong attitude. you got nothing to hide. This isn't the way to show it. He's got a good reason for saying you can't search, and I'm going to prove it. Keep out of that closet, Joe. Take me if you can. I'll make you hold it first. Let me go. Come Let me out go. There, Joe. I'll get a warrant. You I'll won't need a place. warrant, Sarge. Look there. What? In the back of his closet, covered with other clothes. Oh. An overcoat like yours. Just like mine. And in his pocket, there's a gun. I never saw that coat before. I never saw that gun. Well, somebody did. Come on. I'm taking you both to headquarters. I don't know how that overcoat got my closet, Sergeant. Well, I never saw it or that gun before. So you've been saying, Ford. Both of you get into this car. You did this to me, Joe. Sure, I got wife to your frame up, your louse. I threw it right back at you. We'll continue our discussion at the station house. Of course, you'll only hold me long enough to get my testimony. I'll be back home in an hour or so. Maybe. 
You and uh, Miss Williams tagging along after us, Casey? No, Sarge. Uh, I may give you a buzz later, though. We still have our Thanksgiving dinner to finish. So why don't you two get jobs that won't make you work on holidays? <laughs> why don't you? You mean like Captain Logan? <laughs> I've been thinking about it for the last 25 years. Good night. Nice, night, Sarge Come on, let's get into our conversation and get our stuff to the I'm paper I'm going and... back to that rooming house, Annie. Why? Are you convinced that Cousin Bird framed Cousin Joe? Well, his attempt to prevent a search of his room didn't look very good. Annie, I'm just thinking. Well, Joe found that overcoat with what might be called surprising ease. Mm Mm-hmm. It's hard to believe that Joe would invite his own arrest in order to frame his cousin. Why, what little slip? The framer, whoever he is, did make a slip, Annie. His plan didn't anticipate a grease puddle. And he had to get rid of a pair of shoes that may walk back and kick him. Well, none of the shoes in Joe's room or in Bert's had any grease stains on them. No. Sergeant Healy hasn't forgotten those missing shoes, and he'll be back pretty soon to really look for them. Well, I'm going to start looking right now. Oh. I'll ring Newcomb's bell. Sometimes I wish your snooping instincts were more restrained, Casey. I'd like a cup of coffee no. now and talk... Hi, Mr. Newcomb. Mr. Casey. Yes. May we come in? Of course, but I... We didn't go with Sergeant Healy and his prisoners. I wanted to ask, how's your daughter now? She wasn't taking this thing very well when we left. Oh, she feels terrible about it. Miss Williams, perhaps a woman can talk to her better than I can. Would you try to convince her that that everything will come out all right? I'll gladly try, Mr. Newcomb. She's in our private living room. Yeah, go on in and talk to her alone, Annie. I'll stay here. All right. It... It breaks my heart to see my girl crying, Mr. Casey. She's all I have. She blames herself for what has happened. It isn't her fault that two young fools became so infatuated with her. I knew they hated each other, but I never anticipated anything like this. No. Guess not. Of course, you had some reason for coming back here, Mr. Casey. Yes, I came back to ask your permission. Yes? Uh... I want permission to ask a few personal questions between ourselves and off the record. Very well. You haven't wanted Joe for a son-in-law, have you? In my place, would you? The boy has served a reformatory sentence that, according to my observation, has failed to steady him or improve his sense of value. Mm. Bird has been Joe's opposite, I imagine. He always seems so. Lottie strikes me as a pretty sensible girl, Mr. Newcomb. Unless one of those fellows confesses he framed the other, or it can be definitely proven, she'll doubt both of them too much to marry either one of them. Yes, I think that's so. And as there will be no confession or definite proof, things should work out exactly as you planned. As I planned? You're the guy behind this double frame-up. Mr. Casey. You didn't think I'd be back, did you? You shouldn't have changed back into those comfortable old shoes after Sergeant Healy left here. You did a lousy job of cleaning off that grease. Oh, but you held up that filling station and framed both the boys to keep your daughter from marrying either one of them. I was very foolish, wasn't I? Yes, I think so. Shall I call Sergeant Healy? All right. You can call Sergeant Healy, Mr. Casey. I'm ready to confess. Uh, Wait a minute. Wait. Let me take a close look at those shoes. What? of grease in that filling station you heard us talk about wasn't deep enough to reach far above the soles of a shoe. Hey. You greased those shoes yourself. You spread it on so thick it covers the toes and heels. I didn't spread it on. Pal, you're a beautiful liar. And I'm a beautiful dope. You greased those shoes and put them on knowing the cops had come back and spot them. You were willing to take the rap. Because your kid is in love with one of those punks. You can't prove that. Nobody can. And when I confess, that's all that's needed. You forget. The police lab will compare the grease on these shoes with a filling station grease, and it won't be the same. And then Sergeant Healy will go right back to work on Joe and Ferd. The police laboratory can tell? Yes, definitely, Mr. Newcomb. (laughs) But if it couldn't, don't you think your confession would be... Much harder for your daughter to take than the loss of a little rat she thinks she cares for. But I... I couldn't bear to see her cry anymore. All I could think of to do was what I tried. You see, I know the guilty boy, Mr. Casey, and she's loved Joe ever since they were children. No, Joe... I found his grease-stained shoes hidden in the cellar tonight. 
His taste in shoes is like his taste in overcoats, so I could make no mistake. Huh. Well, let's get him. Take him to the cops. Later, Mr. Newcomb. Your daughter's going to realize that the lowdown she'll get on Joe tonight is a cause for real Thanksgiving. <laughs> Join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. This is Harry Marble to remind you how important the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is to your enjoyment of ale and beer. It's a custom-made container made just for you. No one has used it before and no one ever will use it again. When you're through with it, you dispose of it as you would any other food container. There's no deposit, no fuss or bother. And the new Anchor Glass one-way bottle assures you of sparkling ale and beer without cloudiness, and with no foreign flavor or aroma. Beer that's truly brewery bright. Most of the brewers of New England and those who ship ale and beer into New England have adopted this bottle for your protection and added convenience. For the Anchor Glass one-way bottle not only costs the brewer less than any other type of single-trip container, but it also gives you much more for your money. So here's a good rule. When buying ale and beer, always demand a glass bottle. And for extra convenience, Demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. So, the shoes fit Joe and he had to wear them, huh, Casey? Mm. They pinched so tight he cracked wide open, Ethelbert. He admitted planting a duplicate of his coat Ferd's closet, everything. If his scheme had worked, Lottie would never have spoke to Ferd again and she'd have married Joe. Well, that was Joe's idea, Ethelbert, but it worked out in reverse. Lottie sank into Ferd's manly arms when she heard the lowdown and she seemed very comfortable. Gee, what some guys will do for love. <laughs> As my sister Edna says, quote, if love didn't make the world go round, there wouldn't be so much dizziness. Unquote. Or so much niceness. Yeah. A grand guy. Lottie's old man. Hmm. Hey, Annie, what's the matter with us? We got plum pudding and coffee still coming to us. How about it, Ethelbert, huh? Oh, it's about time. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> there isn't any more. <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Stott Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. is directed by John Deep. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note piano. If civilization is to survive, we must reaffirm our religious faith. It's up to each of us. Do your part by supporting and attending your church or synagogue. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS for Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>